September 4th, 1941. My dearest Harry, Father's friends seem to think that I'm bound for hell for feeling the way I do. And I have no doubt that he concurs with them in this regard. I was thinking this afternoon that if our armies were to go to the defense of Great Britain... We'll never that we, get to that point. I know, but if it did, do you think that we We've would... We've got enough of that? our own problems to take care of first. Well, surely we won't watch and do nothing. Now, who knows what will happen with Roosevelt in office? What's wrong with President Roosevelt? He's too liberal. Um... Did you and Wilma have a nice visit today? Yes, ma'am. What'd y'all talk about? Well, I'd like to borrow the car in the morning if that's all right. Oh? Wilma and I are going to go out to a picnic at the new bridge. Um, I have plans for the car tomorrow. Maybe you ought to think about getting yourself a job. Avery? No disrespect, but what do you think I could possibly do in my condition? Your Aunt Catherine could use some light help around her. Oh, I'm sending to Aunt Catherine. Honey, Mama. Honey, you're not going to Aunt Catherine. You know, Daddy, King David had over 30 children with all his maids and concubines. And God forgave him and even allowed him to write books for our Bible. And just what do you mean by that? I'm just saying that God's forgiven me. God did not send a second Samuel to illustrate how acceptable it is to have children out of wedlock. I know, but you yourself said that everything happens for a reason. I wish you wouldn't upset your father like this. I'm just trying to point out the hypocrisy. Well, he is not a hypocrite. Look, we are we're trying our best to deal with this as best we can. And I don't think you appreciate that. Well, you have no idea how hard it is on me to Well, you should Mama. have thought about that before you consummated. Dear Harry, I'll never forget that afternoon when our lives changed forever. Not everyone in town sees it that way. Well, I don't care what everyone else thinks. I'm gonna write you every day. I think about you every second. <laughs> <laughs> I love you forever. You're a special person, Miss Emily Hodge. You wouldn't believe the scandal we've created here in Hamilton. I just pray that our child will never have to know the shame and humiliation I now feel. I wish you were here to hold me and assure me that this will all pass.
April 18th, 1941. Dear Harry, the wisteria is once again in full bloom, and I look forward to enjoying its purple brilliance. Leslie's daughter Wilma and I have become quite good friends, and she took me for a ride in Mr. Geisenberger's new car this afternoon. I admire you so much, Wilma. What for? You've known what you wanted to do with your life, and you're doing it. I don't have a clue what I want to do. Well, you will. I wanted to be a teacher all my life. I just feel like I've wasted mine. I just go from one day to the next, assuming I'll marry and be a wife. You can still do that. I don't think so. No, I don't think I'll ever stop loving Harry. Do you know this is the exact spot where I saw him last? I can still smell him in the breeze. Is that strange? I don't know. I don't think so. Why don't you go on a date with another boy? That Jason Flatbush is a cute looking young fella. Jason Flatbush is eight inches shorter than me, Wilma. Besides, he's interested in Laurel e. Martin. Well, someday somebody gonna come sweep you off your feet. Before you know it, you'll be saying, Harry, who? Who's that? Walter Malone invited me to hear him play at Sadie's place tonight. He's smart. My height got ambition. Got a job this afternoon down at the hardware factory. That's great. Mm -hmm. And you know who didn't? Hey. Eddie Scruggs. You ought to come with me, Emily. You love it. <laughs> oh, no, mm -hmm. I couldn't. My, my father absolutely could. Never even know. Back by five, my mama needs her medication. Yo, mama need everything, Will Becky. You stupid for letting her control you like she does. I think you're just using her as an excuse to stay out of the walk. Shut up. If I've told you once, I've told you a hundred times I've applied to West Point. I'm not about to waste my life in some war I don't even know, you know anything about. Maybe if you read the paper once in a while, you know something about it. Hey, y'all, look at here. Let's go on a boat ride. Huh? Oh, this is Harlan Scruggs' boat. He'd kill us if we took his boat out. Then it's best we don't tell him. Come on! Will, you row. Come on! How much longer do I gotta do this? My arms are getting sore. I heard the other day that this Hitler man was lining up people and shooting them down like dominoes. Well, I hear Europe's overcrowded anyway. I swear, Will Beckham, you're about the most insensitive person I know. But don't forget it was the Jews who crucified Jesus Christ. Well, wait a minute. Are you saying that God is getting revenge on the Jews? All I'm saying is we'll all be held accountable for our own actions. It wasn't these Jewish people who killed Jesus. We should never be so quick to question God's judgment. Nor should we fabricate his intentions either. I'm not fabricating anything. Whatever that means. This is sick. It's just a lot of sickness. It's gonna pass real quick. Please do not say anything in front of him. Say what in front of who? I'm sorry. Well, you about to start showing. You can't hide it forever. Hide what? Are you pregnant? Please don't tell anyone. You don't have a bastard child. Oh, well, sometimes I wonder if your jaw muscles just gave out at birth, because you sure ain't shut up since. Please don't tell anyone else. Especially you, Will. We yeah, have done this time, Emily Hodge. Shut up, you pansy. Keep on rowing. I saw Mary Beth Darren this morning. Really? How is she? She says her aunt's ill, so I thought it'd be nice if we added her to our prayer list. Honey, Mary Beth Deering doesn't have an aunt. Ruth, Avery, come to supper. Father God, thank you for these countless and many blessings bestowed upon us. Bless this food to our nourishment and help us live according to your will. In Christ's name. Amen. I like to 
borrow the car this Saturday. Mama and I made plans to go to the airfield. Avery? Avery, don't do this. Sit down. I want you to realize that you are tearing this family apart. How do you think all this affects your mother and me? People are saying things, Emily. You are aware that people talk. I don't know how much more of this I can take. Your father loves you very much. He only wants what's best for you. Yes, ma'am. Come on, go ahead and eat. I can't read it, so you need to holler or write it right so I can read it. Leslie, it's right there. Hey, Miss Melina. What you doing coming through the front door? You want me to lose my job? I'm sorry, Mama. We was going to the back, but it was money around the sides. I don't want to walk around. Now, you got a good head on your shoulders. You oh, that's no problem. Y'all just going out and back. Now, I'll get Jordan. Just a minute, okay? Are you coming? Mm -hmm. I ain't going out on the back porch like a reject. Come on. It's a, a mighty fine dress you're wearing, Miss Lessie. Must you degrade everything you come in contact with? I wasn't. I, I was complimenting her dress. She could at least have said thank you or something. It sure is hot out here. Stop complaining. I ain't making rules. No, but you're making me sit out here with you. Well, you're free to go inside anytime you like. Well, don't tempt me, because I might just do that. Fine. Fine. Morning, Emily. Hey, Eddie. Eddie. Wilma. How y'all doing? We're just fine. Hey, Will, I, I hear they're uh, recruiting young pilots down at the parade this Saturday. You gonna be there? No. Oh, that's right. You're going to West Point. Yeah, I got a couple of good buddies up there from Clarksdale. I'll, I'll be sure to tell them to be on the lookout for you. <laughs> Jerk. You just don't pay any attention to him. My mama said his daddy's still working colored folks on his farm like they were slaves. I believe it. Just don't let it bother you, Will. Probably made his day. A nigga, a Jezebel, and a sissy. Don't you dare ever call me a Jezebel again, understand? <laughs> you obviously don't know what a Jezebel is. I'm warning you. Oh, yes, ma'am. watching this aunt carry their crumb for the past 10 minutes now. You know what? It reminds me of me. Reminds you of you? Yeah, pushing hard, going nowhere fast, just like me. I don't know why I'm out here with both y'all. You afraid it might hurt your reputation being seen with a couple of girls? You know, I, I would like to think that you two would be honored to be with a future West Point graduate. You'll see, I'll be smarter than both of y'all. No, I am not impressed one bit by your stories, Will Bacon. Are you really trying to get into West Point, Will? Of course he's not! I can speak for myself, if you don't mind. Yes, I am. How much longer are we gonna stay here? I gotta get back before dark. So saith your mama? I have to get her medicine to her. Since when is whiskey medicine? When do you have to know everything about everybody else's business? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're caught on my line. I told you not to cast near me. What are you doing? I want to call the fish. Read the paper this morning? No, what it say? Nothing. Nothing but a small sentence saying Will Bacon, a local youth, had been apprehended while shoplifting. That's it? Nothing about an attack? That's it. Except Mr. Yeaman wasn't going to press no charges on account of the $2 bottle of Old Crow been returned unopened. I can't imagine you'd have it out for Will Bacon. Well, I can't even ring a hand for Thanksgiving dinner. 
You just don't get it, do you? The Scruggs boys? Eddie and Holland? They jumped Will because he was seen here with you and me. Why that matter? You know what your problem is, girl? You are too naive. We're not exactly the most liked people here in Hamilton now Will and gone and got himself hurt because of it. You mean because of me? No. I mean because we are living in a place where no decent white girl like you should be sitting out here on the back porch of this place with some colored girl like me. Don't talk like that. I'll sit wherever I want. And I bet, well, Bacon just brought it on himself. But Eddie Scruggs heard him calling him names the other day. Well, names or no names, that boy better shape up. I guess we better go see him. Dead. Well, maybe we shouldn't go no closer to him. Dead people give me the jibby. Who are? I'm not dead, you fool. God. I don't want nobody to see me like this and look the form. Pull that sheet down, Will Bacon. Let us get a good look at you. No. Well, you obviously ain't that bad off you talking. Well, you should have thought about this before you often stole that bottle of whiskey. I didn't steal that whiskey. I told Mr. J. I'd pay him first thing Monday morning. At least I gave those Scruggs boys a run for their money. <laughs> Shut up, I did. It took them 30 minutes to three of them to pin me down and break one of my ribs. You're so pathetic. Well, it's true. I believe you, Will. Tell your story. I'm sorry, Will. Well, you gonna be like that then? Come on. We done seen him. Let's go. Oh, come on. I hope you feel better. Bye. I'll get out tomorrow, so there's no need for y'all to come back. Ooh, look at you. How you doing? I'm fine. <laughs> Mrs. Geisenberg, this little boy had the chicken pox, so she gave me the day off. Mrs. Geisenberg is such a fine Christian lady, even if she is Jewish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about any names yet? Harry, if it's a boy, and Teresa, if it's a girl. Teresa? St. Teresa's my favorite saint. Child, you Presbyterian. You're not supposed to be worrying yourself with all them saints. <laughs> Any word from the father? I know why he's not writing back, though. Why's that? I read in the paper last week that they're turning Hargis Field into a training ground for the new recruits. And most of the men from Camp Shelby are coming up here to train. Yeah, I read that, too. Well, Harry's at Camp Shelby. He's the best pilot they've got there. Don't you see? He's not writing me back because he knows he's going to be back here. He's saving it all for when he sees me in person. What if he don't show? He's going to show. Can I buy the car for an hour, please? Well, that just depends on where you want to go. Out. Out where? I just want to go over to Hargis Field to see someone. Well, who is it you want to see? Mama, can I just borrow the car, please? All right. But don't tell your father. Wilder, Miss Emily Hodge here to see you. Well, good morning, Miss Hodge. Please do come have a seat. Thank you. I can't stay long, though. 
I have my brother waiting out in the car. Well, what can I do for you this morning? Well, I drove out here, sir, to inquire about Lieutenant Harry Devening. I read in the paper that he was supposed to be stationed here to help train some of the other pilots. May I ask, why it is you're inquiring about the lieutenant? Um, we're friends. Friends. <laughs> With all due respect, Captain Wilder, I don't think that's any of your business. I just need to locate him, sir. Can you tell me where he's stationed? Lieutenant Devening is one of the finest pilots I've ever seen. Too good, in fact, to come up here and train a bunch of farm boys straight out of high school. I'm afraid he's much more valuable than that. So what do you mean, sir? I can't tell you where he's stationed. He's been sent to a, a special alert camp off the East Coast somewhere where he'll be flying with the best pilots from all over the country. But uh, I'm sorry, more than that, I, I can't help you. Oh, golly. <laughs> well, thank you anyway. Good day, Miss Hodge. Good afternoon, Miss Hodge. Good afternoon, Captain Wilder. Ma'am? I was just, uh, I was just headed to mail this to you. It came in care of the training base. Thank you. Will you, uh, be attending the holiday dance tomorrow night? Oh, no. I'm in no condition to dance. Well, you don't have to dance to enjoy a little Christmas spirit. I hope you'll think about it. I'd hate to think you home by yourself. Well, I'll think about it. Good. Hope to see you there. My dearest Emily, you are a sweet girl, and though I do feel a great fondness for you, our worlds are too different. I know you will make a great wife to someone someday. If, if I never see you again, sweet Emily, I am thankful for our brief time together. Please know whenever I fly, I will look down and remember you. Always take care. Harry C. Devnan. Second Lieutenant AAC. P.S. by separate mailing, I am returning all of your letters unopened. It's gonna be all right. Everything's gonna be fine. At least you know he's still alive. I don't want him to be alive. Not if he's not going to be here in Hamilton with me. But he doesn't even know I'm having his baby. I know, honey, I know. And I can't run him and tell him because I don't even know where he is. I'm going to go to that Christmas dance. I am because his friends will be there. And that way I can find out where he is. To the Christmas dance all by yourself? I'll get Will thinking to go with me. <laughs> Do you think your mama can make me a dress? She can make you whatever you want. She's home right now. Come on, let's go. Let's go. I love you, Emma. I love you too. Hot <laughs> mother. You're right. You don't have to dance to have fun. That's a, a beautiful dress you have on. Thank you. So will you be spending Christmas in Hamilton? No, I'm going to head down to Biloxi for the holidays. A friend of mine with family down here is kind enough to let me tag along. 
Have you heard from Lieutenant Davening lately? No, I'm afraid not. No. Uh, he could be anywhere now. Great Britain, Guam. But would you care to dance, Miss Hodge? Oh, I guess. Uh, Christmas is over, boys. We're going to war. Say your farewells. The uh, trucks leave for Biloxi in one hour. It means the Japs are getting serious. Miss Hodge, you, you take good care. I, if I see Harry, I, I tell him you said hello. I appreciate that. I've decided to put my baby up for adoption. <clears throat> I realized I've embarrassed you both, and I'm sorry. I just don't think it would be fair to raise a child without a father. And I think by making this decision, I'll be doing what's best for everyone. Lieutenant Devenin been lately. He's not your Lieutenant Devenin. Mama, will you please go get Will and Emily's Franklin Delanor? Who? Will you wake up? We've got customers. Now get over there and get Will and Emily's order, and then get back here and help Lassie. Come on, I'm What do you want? And would you be nice about it? Why don't you? Can I take your order, please? I have two eggs poached on toast with some orange juice. I have two fried eggs. Ham or bacon? Oh, you know I always get bacon. Oh, now, boy, I done told you about all that mumbling. Write it down like I showed you and put it up here. All that mumbling, like I'm supposed to understand. Oh, jeez. You know, I, I was thinking about asking Melvina to marry me. She's not gonna marry you. Well, I'm already living at her house, so it's not like things would be that different. 
Well, if you ask me, it's not that you love her in so much as you just need a replacement for your dead mother. My mother was a good woman. Your mother was committed for stripping all her clothes off at the Confederate ball. She was drunk and thought that modern women look ridiculous in hoop skirts. Besides, I have to do something with my life, family. I can't just mosey through without a future. And Melvina can provide everything I need. Money, for instance. And a job. She's gonna put me in charge of the print shop. Well, it's your life. I mean, you are gonna do what you want to do anyway. Mama, I did it, Mama! Look what I got! Mama! Mama! I did it, Mama! I did it! I got my teacher's license! Oh, Mama! I'm so proud of you! <laughs> Look at that! Watson, you did not. I am oh, so proud of you. Gottenberg was excited for me, too. She said she's going to let me use her husband's old car to get to and from the school. Well, I don't know about that now. That's I'll a be pretty generous. I'll be paying for my own gas, Mama. I've been saving up. Oh, Miss oh. Vina, Miss Vina, look. Look, Mama got her. What you call it? A teacher's license. Teacher's license. Oh. That's not this. A special occasion like this deserves oh. a lemon pie. Franklin? Oh, he's been sitting down there all day. Ain't been doing nothing. Now, go back to the pie set and get that lemon meringue pie. Got it. Just give me a The summer of 45 proved to be very difficult for me. I tried once more in vain to make contact with Harry, as thoughts of him and our child kept haunting me. I realized my longing for love and motherhood would forever be unfulfilled, and coming to terms with that was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. all my fault. It's not your fault. I was the one that encouraged him to go after the job to begin with. Walter was the best man for that job and Eddie Scruggs knew it. That's why he was so threatened. I don't care how threatened he was. He didn't have to beat him like he did. Well, certain people just assume that they should have priority of other people in this town. But that don't make it right. I'm not saying it does. They're not going to even do anything to Eddie Scruggs. What can they do? His father's mayor. Walter's never going to be able to work a decent job the rest of his life. He's going to get better, Wilma. He is. And what Eddie did wasn't right. But he's just been Eddie. He's always been that way. What's up? You won't. Yours. I've always been on your side. But Walter stood up for himself. Against Daddy Scruggs of all people. It's got to be good in that, don't you think? It's not right to have to stand up for what's rightfully yours to begin with. You really want to make a difference in your life and be remembered for doing some good? You know I do. Then, tomorrow night, we're going to get a group of people together, and we're going to rally to demand justice. I think you're making this into a much bigger thing than it really is. You said you were on my side. I know, Wilma, but my daddy, he would kill me. You said you wanted to do something with your life. Well, here's your chance. Okay. Oh, come on, I'll give you a few. You want my hand? <laughs> I thought you better than that. <sighs> I heard you stirred up some trouble the other night. Franklin, go get us some pie. But, Mama, I got a real good hand. Yeah, well, it'll be here when you get back. Come on. For what it's worth, I want you to know that I am real proud of you. It takes a lot of spirit to do what you did. Your daddy will come around to seeing that eventually. I hope so. He will. What are you doing? I've been waiting for you for 30 minutes so I could leave. Get up and clean up. Please. Yes. I'm going to have to work on his attitude. Don't you agree? He means well. Thank you. Frank, 
Franklin, who told you that you could have some pie? You have to ask nicely. May I please have a piece of pie? No, it's too late. I want you to have this. I got it for Wilma for her birthday. <laughs> so she could write her ideas and goals so she wouldn't forget. And I want you to fill it in for her, all right? All right, now. All right, now. All right. That day, I buried the best friend I have ever known. Wilma was like a sister to me. I thought I had lost everything that meant anything. You're a best friend. She loved you. And I never said it or even expressed it. But I loved her too. Franklin, Delanor, who? Come on. We got to take that food off your lessons. Come on, son, let's go. You better go before she gets on to you. I love you too, Emily. Then testify with me. Nothing's gonna happen unless you testify. You're the only one who saw what happened. I can't do that. Melvina don't want me getting involved, and I don't think I should get involved either. You're already involved, Will. I don't understand why you wouldn't want to... you don't understand, Emily. What you're about to do is extremely dangerous. I've been safe my whole life. Well, now, excuse my frankness, but you're just being plain stupid. You can't bring her back. You might as well just let her go. You know, Will, there are thousands of men right now who set aside their lives to fight for other people's freedom. People that they don't even know. That's what this whole war's about. If they can do it, so can we. And it looked like he was going to get physical with her. If that was the case, then why didn't you come to Miss Watson's aid when Edward supposedly lost his temper? Well, it all happened so fast. I see. Well, you do realize, Miss Hodge, that it is my client's testimony that he was nowhere near McGuire's grill on the night of Miss Watson's unfortunate accident. No. In fact, we have witnesses who will place Edward across town. Well, Eddie Scruggs is a liar. I was there, and I saw him push her. Oh, that is a lie. You weren't there. You stayed inside. It was then that I decided to move out of my parents' house. It was for the best. And Father agreed. 
Mary Beth Daring is telling everybody you're moving out here to be a recluse? Mary Beth Daring is just jealous because her father won't allow her to have a house of her own. Well, your daddy's only buying you this house because... I know why my daddy's buying me this house, Will. You don't have to keep pointing it out. Well, no one's gonna come up all the way here to visit you. You know that, right? Maybe that's what I want. But don't be so pitiful and you might still have a chance at some friends. What do you know about having friends? Can we please get out of that car and come help me with my bags like a gentleman? You just go back home, you know? It's not too late. This is my home. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't say anything in court. I've been thinking a lot, and I know I haven't been a really good friend, and I wish I could have. I've decided to leave Hamilton. I decided to leave. I need to move on. Oh, that's crazy, Will. Where are you gonna go? Well, I finally got accepted to West Point. <sighs> are you kidding? Nope. You did? Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Oh, I'm so proud of you, I am. <laughs> so, Will Bacon left Hamilton, and he flourished within the walls of the military. I finally heard news of Harry. His plane went down somewhere over Hamburg. He lived for a week with his legs amputated, but then his body just couldn't take the shock anymore. He passed on. I don't know if he ever knew he was a father, but it's probably better that way. It wasn't long after that that your father paid me a visit. Hi, Emily. Your mother told me I could find you out here. Captain Wilder. I haven't been called that in years. I Actually, I made major before I was discharged. Well, congratulations, then. <laughs> so what brings you back to Hamilton? Oh, I have business in Sumner. I, I work for the Commerce Bank up in Memphis now, and I found myself 10 minutes away from Hamilton. I thought I'd drive through and see how much it changed in four years' time. Well, I can assure you quite a lot has changed. I don't know about that. Years have been very good to you. Thank you. I admire you, Miss Hodge. I think you're a, a very decent young woman, and I admire that. I find that hard to believe, Major Wilder. You hardly know the first thing about me. Well, in the wake of Harry's accident, I feel that I should tell you. I read your letters to him. It was one of my jobs as a commanding officer to censor the letters of my men. I don't understand. They were returned to me, all unopened. I'm sorry. I was just doing my job. I think it would be best if you leave now.
You're a very special person, Emily Hodge. Don't you ever let anybody tell you different. 